In this video, I'm going to demonstrate three different types of temperature sensors that you can use in your Arduino projects. All right, so you're working on your Arduino project and you need to measure temperature. How do you do it? Which sensor do you use? There are so many choices out there. In this video, I'm going to share with you three sensors that I use in my personal projects and explain the pros and cons of each one. I'll show you how to connect each sensor to your Arduino and share some basic code that you can use in your own projects. The first sensor is the LM34. In the default configuration, this sensor is capable of outputting between 5 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. For those of you who prefer Celsius, there is an LM35 chip which is very similar. However, the LM34 has slightly better accuracy and a bigger range, so you may just want to measure in Fahrenheit and convert back to Celsius. The sensor is very easy to connect. Just connect 5 volts to the pin on the left and ground to the pin on the right. The middle pin will connect to one of your analog channels on the Arduino. For this demonstration, I'm going to use analog channel A0. Now this code is super easy. In order to get the temperature in Fahrenheit, we simply take the analog read value from channel A0, multiply it by 500, and divide by 1024. Let's open the serial monitor up, see what we're reading. Okay, I'm going to put my hand on the sensor to warm it up a little bit. As you can see, it's tracking nicely. The sensor has high accuracy, it's small, it's cheap, it's fast, and it's super easy to code. So why wouldn't I want to use this sensor in every one of my projects? Because this is an analog sensor, it has to be in close proximity to the Arduino. The longer the signal wire, the more susceptible it is to interference and the less accurate the sensor becomes. So if you're trying to measure things far away from the Arduino, this is not the sensor for you. The DS18B20 is capable of measuring between negative 55 Celsius and 125 degrees Celsius with a plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius accuracy. Connection of this sensor is also pretty straightforward. We just need 5 volts from the Arduino, ground from the Arduino, and in this case I'm using digital pin 7. Now you will notice that I have a pull-up resistor between the output of the sensor and 5 volts on the Arduino. Without this pull-up resistor, the sensor will not work. One really cool feature about this sensor is the ability to install multiple sensors in parallel while still only using one digital pin on the Arduino. Here I have three sensors connected to one digital input pin. Let's dive into the Arduino code for a quick demonstration. For this code, you'll need two libraries, one wire and Dallas temperature. Here we're defining Arduino pin 7 as the one wire bus. In this code, we're going to let the Arduino figure out how many sensors are attached to pin 7. Therefore, we have an integer called number of sensors. We'll also have a float for the temperature. In the setup loop, we'll start the serial monitor and ask the Arduino to figure out how many devices are connected to pin 7. Then we'll have the Arduino tell us how many sensors it finds with these serial print lines. In the loop, we'll have the Arduino ask each sensor to report their temperature, and we'll display each temperature on the serial monitor. Note here that I'm converting these temperatures to Fahrenheit. If you want to keep them in Celsius, you just leave out that command. Finally, we'll print an empty line and wait another two seconds and repeat the loop. Now let's run the serial monitor. As you can see, we have one sensor connected to Arduino pin 7 and it's reporting its temperature every two seconds. Now I've connected two more sensors. I'm going to hit the reset button on the Arduino. And now it's found three sensors. You can see they're about the same temperature. I'm going to hold on to one of them with my hand. Looks like I'm holding sensor number one. Now trial and error is just one way to figure out which sensor is which. Each sensor actually has its own serial number and there are commands in the libraries to determine the serial number for each sensor. So the software is a little bit trickier, but it's pretty cool that we can have multiple sensors connected to one digital pin on the Arduino. And because they're not subject to noise, we can have the sensors located far away from the Arduino. So why wouldn't we use these sensors in all of our projects? Well, the first reason is that the plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius accuracy isn't the greatest, 
The other reason is that these sensors are relatively slow. They can only send a signal to the Arduino about once per second. So if you need something that's accurate and fast, this is not the sensor for your project. Now some of you are thinking, hang on, the DS3231 is a real-time clock. What's this guy thinking? It is a clock. It keeps track of the day of the week, the month, the year, the time, even down to the second. It also has a built-in temperature sensor. This makes it a natural fit for projects such as this temperature data logger. This project uses an Arduino Nano to read the date, time, and temperature from the real-time clock, and then it writes it to an SD card. Now this code is quite a bit more complicated, but I'll try to talk through some of the basics. First of all, it requires these three libraries. In the setup loop, we make sure that we have communication with the SD card, and we can uncomment these commands below to set the time and date of the real-time clock. In the loop, we get the date, time, and temperature from the real-time clock and write those values to the SD card. I'm then able to take the SD card and dump it into Microsoft Excel where I can display it as a chart. This chart here represents about one hour worth of data. I'm not going to go over the wiring for this project in this video, but I will leave the details for this project and the software for all three sensors on my Facebook page. So why isn't this sensor a good fit for all of our projects? For one thing, this sensor has a limited range, only between 0 and 70 degrees Celsius, and it has the lowest accuracy of all three sensors. Also, this sensor only updates the temperature once every minute. So if you need something to control something fast, this may not be the best choice. So which of these sensors is right for your project? Well, that depends on what you're trying to do. So before you start a new project, consider the cost, size, range, accuracy, and speed of your temperature requirements, not to mention the complexity of wiring and coding. Hopefully this video has increased your awareness of the capabilities of these three sensors, I wish you the best in all of your projects, and once again, thanks for watching.